Hello and welcome to this next edition of uh, the RevOx Charlie Demo Day, where I get to meet and speak with uh, technology vendors that work in the uh, in the revenue space. And I'm absolutely thrilled today to welcome Holden Miller from Reveal. Uh, how are you doing today, Holden? Doing well, Charlie. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, partnership. And I think as uh, as Reveal call it, nearbound. So perhaps you'd like to just take a couple of minutes and just maybe introduce yourself and your role uh, and a little bit about Reveal. Yeah, absolutely, Charlie. So um, my name is Holden Miller. I'm our global account executive um, focused primarily in North America. Um, in terms of Reveal, um, we're a really hot startup right now that's doing um, a lot of impressive work with what we call Nearbound. Essentially, the easiest way to think of Nearbound is it's another go-to-market notion where we've understood that outbound technology is getting stale. Inbound still works you know, sufficiently well, but Nearbound is the way to the future. How do we leverage relationships, the partnerships that our teams have already put together and show sales, marketing, customer success, the different avenues that they can go close, retain, and market to those accounts. And I think, I mean, uh, I might look twelve years old, but I started in um, in sales in ninety nine, and um, back then it was all partners because there were so many company tech companies had come out of the Cisco ecosystem or the Microsoft ecosystem, and because back then you were shipping a CD around, um, you had to use partners, local partners. And then I think cloud went quite direct. Salesforce is very much a direct model. I'm definitely seeing that it's swing back the other way because there's just so many vendors that mm. as a as a buyer, you you have to rely on someone else to give you a little bit of a, a steer in which direction to go. Absolutely. No, and I think it is coming back around. And I think the biggest issue previously was you know, everybody was inundated with new technology and selling in quick manners, um, account-based marketing, for example. And I think as time went on, sales reps started to view partnerships as a potential threat, you know, to their quota, to how they go, um, go about their book of business. But now we're showing them that it's actually extremely beneficial and helps them get their job done. Mm. So so when you think about your your target customer, your ideal customer profile, what, what type of of business is um, is a, is a great fit for reveal. Honestly, all um, as long as they have a decent notion or um, motion, I should say, um, around partnerships. Um, currently, a lot of our customers are you know um, tech based, HR based, um, but we're branching into the life sciences and many other industries as well. The main premise is understanding if they have a channel or partnership notion within their mm. company. Yeah. Do, do you find that they need to have, um, they kind of got to have a partner program up and running, or that Reveal can be that kind of launch pad for for spinning this kind of thing up? Both, um, you know, we do help a, a decent amount of our clients essentially get into a software like a Reveal and start showing them the beauty of automating account mapping, but mm -hmm. also. We have an extensive network of clients already on our network. So it makes it easy for people to use Reveal, see who's mm -hmm. out there, who they can connect with, kind of like a LinkedIn format. And then from yeah. there, they can understand the ROI per partner as they go through mm -hmm. the journey with us. Yeah. So are you able to dig into that a bit more? So like as a, uh, okay, let's say I've got an early stage partner program. And at the moment, we're managing it all on Google Sheets and we're trying to you know collaborate with, with our, our partners. Um, what's the value of me doing it through a system? Yeah, well, in today's world, everybody's concerned about security. So first and foremost, you know, passing that data, client sensitive information back and forth via email or an Excel sheet, it's a mm -hmm. risk. So yeah. immediately we're helping with that, but also we're just giving people time back to their day. You know, nobody enjoys account mapping, digging through Excel and trying to find low hanging fruit. We can mm -hmm. just surface that to them and allow them to really work on their relationships, their partnerships. Mm -hmm. That really defeats the battle there. Yeah, yeah. And and who is that person? What's that persona? What's that role that you speak to in a in a yeah. company mainly? 
Um, so typically, you know, a lot of people think we only speak to partnership folks. Uh, you know, a good majority of our buyers or our influencers are the partnership team. However, mm -hmm. with earbound concept and how we're taking this to a go-to-market approach, now we have a lot of the buyers typically being VPs of sales, VPs of customer mm -hmm. success, marketing, and even in a few use cases, product. Mm -hmm. You know, taking our data and being able to evolutionize their current tech stack and their product and the way they offer their services to their clients as well. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, like the definition of a partner is so, so loose as well. Like it was having a look on um, uh, G2's bio behavior report. Um, I don't think they have the stat in this year's one, but in last year's one, they looked at the percentage of um, uh, software purchases that were done through some form of partner. And it was 40%. So 60% is direct from the vendor. Yeah, then 40% was through a partner of which like 30% was uh, a marketplace like an AWS or a Google Cloud. And then 10% was was VARs, a value added resellers. And so I was thinking, yeah, okay, right. So 40% comes through through partners. But then I thought, hang on, that's missing a big amount of partners, which is influencers, consultants, uh, technology partners, uh, mm -hmm. in integrators, uh, all these other people that are part of that partnership conversation, but it's not necessarily a, a commercial resale. Yeah, no, and that's fair. I mean, and the biggest issue, which it sounds like right there, especially is attribution. How do people get the credit for, you know, the little or the extensive work that they're putting forth? So we do help with our reporting, make sure attribution's there. Um, and also what we try to pitch our clients and any of our users is, you know, partnerships has historically, to your point, been a big part of sales. Mm -hmm. What we need to include now is maybe have a third of it be outbound, a third of it be inbound, and another third of it be nearbound, making sure partnerships is there as that nucleus. Yeah. And um, and when you think about, talked a little bit about the value of it to a customer, and I think there were uh, there are a few stats that saw on your website, which, I, which definitely resonates with me, because we used to talk about this in a company I used to work with, where they get a partner involved, will be bigger, close consistently, a higher conversion rate, um, and they'll close faster. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, and definitely we're, we're seeing that, that if you go alone as a, as a vendor, more likely, you, you might win your, your deal, but it's likely to be smaller, slightly to close less successfully um and so how do you see this type of conversation coming up with the with the buyers that you're speaking with are, are they able to put a, a a number on that and start to think about the economic value of treating partnerships more strategically yeah and i i think it comes down to also you know how historically they've worked with partners too because mm -hmm. you don't want to just flip the switch on them aes naturally follow their own tendencies so how do we mm -hmm. kind of blend the two so I think, you know, to your point, you know, sales, revenue, we appreciate higher contract values, quicker sales cycles, less discounting. Mm. Now, the key to doing that, yes, involves partners, but not putting all of your accounts through partners. We don't want to just blow it up and make sure we're just abusing partnerships. Yeah. Where it really helps is moving the needle on some of those key accounts, the big target accounts that you need that extra push. You need to get multi-threaded and make sure you can get as much intel ahead of time to avoid any mm. of those road bumps. Yeah, yeah. And um, like I mentioned uh, good old Google Sheets uh, or any any of your favorite spreadsheets, but what, what are the other options that people have got if they're not, they're not going down the reveal route? Um, how are you seeing other people manage their partnerships today? Not well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> essentially, you know, it's a Google Sheets. It's a, a static CSV file or uh, Microsoft Excel, you know, and yeah. the issue with that is it gets stale. You always have to update it. You know, the data is mm -hmm. not constantly flowing through and acting in real time. So yeah, a lot of these companies, you know, if they are still doing that notion, they're a little mm -hmm. bit behind in the partnerships and they want to evolutionize that. Mm -hmm. There are some, you know, big companies who just that's kind of their um, their mindset and how they work as well. But yeah. as long as you have the workflow behind it, mm -hmm. it can be you know optimized. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just on a call with someone and uh, they were meeting with one of their partners. It was a technology company meeting with a partner 
and between them they couldn't even work out how many joint customers they had like I, I can't tell you how many of our customers are also yours and it's it's crazy then you go one step further to say right well how many accounts have we got that we're trying to prospect into together and it's just so difficult for for people to figure it out um any any other way um i wonder if you if you're up for it whether it's helpful just to take a look at um at the tool and just help people to understand a little bit about um what i might need to set you up actually in terms of different people sharing but there we go. Um, because maybe that helps uh, to visualize a little of, of what we're talking about here. Absolutely. So kind of how I like to show this is, you know, what's the end game with a solution like Reveal, but then kind of pull, uh, peeling back the onion, how does it get built? What goes into it? So like we were saying, um, you know, Charlie, essentially account mapping, it's pretty straightforward. What are our common customers are, uh, common opportunities. How do my prospects map against your accounts? Makes sense. What we need to do is make it actionable. So yes, we help with the automation, but at the end of the day, we're trying to get our data breathing and living inside CRM. So a HubSpot, a Salesforce, and making it actionable for the reps. We know that reps do not like to add new technology. Adoption is always a big issue. So simplify it. If we think about a rep at any company, maybe, you know, a a technology um, account or a company here in the US. Maybe they're focused on going after a company like Alt Automotive. Historically, AEs do not have the visibility to see how partners can help. They think you know they need to bring it to them and vice versa. So what we do is put a nice little widget here saying, hey, here's the involvement from your partnership team. As you can tell, Alt Automotive, the account you are hoping to go after, currently is a customer of seven of your partners. It's also an open opportunity of six. Me as an AE, that's 13 potential avenues to go close this business. If it's getting stuck, if I want to get intel, influence, and introduction, this is my way to do so. We understand that trust is the new data. So with this, you could click into any of your partners and see who they know, how they know them, and what you can start pulling. So I can see who owns this relationship. They've already gone through a pre-sale uh, pre cycle with them. Here are the two common contacts at the opportunity level. So we're working with the same people, which is good. But in today's world, Charlie, we understand that some people unfortunately get let go. Our champions might um, you know, leave midway through the sales cycle. How can we pivot and get multi-threaded? Here are all mm -hmm. the additional roles and contacts I could be introduced to. And how we make this simple is we allow sales, marketing, whoever just go, hey, I need some help. Can I get introduced? Can I get in um, some influence? Can I get intel as to how the sales cycle went with you know our partner? And we have the ability to send this through Slack, email, directly through Reveal. And all you have to do is choose who you want to go after. And just like that, I can say, Charlie, I need help with X, Y, Z. And just like that, you can send that off. Your partnership team receives that request. Attribution is there, whether it's sourced or influenced pipeline or revenue. And now we're starting to work that year bound motion. Mm -hmm. Now that's what it can look like in Salesforce. Again, this can roll up to any dashboards, levels of reporting that you want to show. One of my favorites is making near bound a part of that go to market motion. We understand that sales historically is a numbers game. The more meetings that you book, the more that are qualified, the more close one revenue you have at the end of the day. Where can we scale and push you know, from top of funnel down? The same can be happening with partnerships. You know, How many get intros? How many requests are coming from our AEs? How many are being accepted to overall how many meetings are booked? And finally, showing you how much we can close, what's sourced, what's influenced, and full visual representation that depicts what partnerships brings to the table. Any thoughts there, Charlie, so far? That's right. I 100% uh, agree in helping people in the flow of their work. Um, you know, there's so much uh, uh, tech systems and platforms that uh, helping salespeople to be in one place and uh, to manage their opportunities there is, is definitely helpful. Absolutely. And can you see this new screen? I can. Yeah. Perfect. Want to make sure I'm not talking to, you know, the <laughs> same. <one. laughs> so 
I'm not going to bore you to death, Charlie, with just the one-on-one -on -one account mapping because everybody understands mm. at a higher level what that can do. But one thing that we want to do and um, kind of bring to the table in a different light is something that we call 360 account mapping as well. And as this pulls up here, give me a quick second. Essentially, what we have the ability to do is not just map one-to-one. -one, we can map mm. one-to-all. Okay. So vision that, you know, your partnership team has a hundred or so partners living and breathing. You know, what we can do here, get this apple out of the way, is essentially get um, the involvement from sales, marketing, and customer success. Many different use cases can come out of this data. If we have a look at all of our prospects or customers potentially here, mm -hmm. what's the involvement with partners? Well, if I want to go close Burlington stores, just like we did in Salesforce, who are they a customer of? Who are they an open opportunity of? And how can I stack rank or prioritize this? Mm. So if you think of use cases, sales can pull up their pitch or their patch for the particular AE and say, hey, here's your top 10 deals that you need to work through partnerships. Marketing can come in and understand the lay of the land. Who do we need to focus on doing webinars, case studies, um, you know, marketing collateral with? And then customer success can start looking at integrations. Who are people mm -hmm. renewing with based off their tech stack? Is it a high churn rate? Is it a successful renewal? Where do we need to step in and allow partners to use that relationship? So again, just an easy, um, easy to use representation. But at the end of the day, prioritization is one of the aspects of our game in that mm -hmm. near, near bound motion. Who to focus on, how to go after them, and how do partners help you get there? So I guess here where we've got is a customer of, you know, this is the value of the thing, which is uh, you show me mine and I'll show you yours or the other way around. So um, what's the what's the downside? Like, um, do you do you have people say, well, I don't want to um, uh, integrate my CRM. I don't want to expose our, our pipeline. What's what's the risk yeah. to someone of doing that? So we have the ability per partner. You can deem what you want to share and what um, and deem kind of what's best fit in that regard. You can lock down accounts. You know, we have a lot of people who share data with their competitors, mm. but they lock down certain criteria. They might want to work on maybe one type of product that they want to co-sell against. Mm. But at the end of the day, we are, you know, um, fully compliant. So we're not sharing contact sensitive information. Um, but the other avenue that we have is essentially if you don't want to connect your CRM, maybe you have a year-long InfoSec review, you can do offline account mapping. So Excel sheets, mm. CSV files, and map it out against your partners all at the same. Mm. Yeah. And I think certainly in my experience, people are doing this. They're just doing it offline. So it's just about having some uh, some some control over it. Uh, and then I the, uh, the second part to that question, I guess, is... Um, uh, is this typically relatively small companies uh, sharing with relatively small companies, or are you starting to see the sales forces, the Microsofts, the the Cisco is getting involved with this as well, and and helping their um, downstream partners to be able to to peer? Um, honestly, you're seeing it everywhere. We have small mom and pop shops with you know a partnership team of one, um, where they do sixty percent of the revenue based off partnerships. We have companies that are very large, you know, similar to the ones that you mentioned earlier that use this with, you know, other big distributors. They use them with smaller companies. What we can bring to the table is identify who those top partners are and who mm -hmm. they need to focus on, as opposed to going out and signing 200 partnership agreements. Yeah. What's really moving the needle as opposed to what's on the tail end of that partner scheme. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely is, um, you can't do that on, on a spreadsheet is... You know, by by um, exposing your own pipeline, or at least the, the account names and your opportunities, then having the system guide you to write, well, here's a, a hot fit um, partner, but there's a lot of crossover, even though you might not think they're in your space. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and then in, in terms of the, the conversations that you have with these uh, customers, with buyer, uh, uh, buying groups, what are the common questions that they're asking you maybe that I've not asked that uh, that uh, they're um, they're wanting to know before they move forwards typically it's you know what's next 
it's great mm. to buy a software, but you know, for a lot of companies, this is a new play. It's a new way to approach um, revenue and go to market. So one thing that we take a lot of pride on is building out account plans, letting them see kind of the scope and what the steps are that they need. Mm -hmm. um, to any of your listeners that are on today, we do have the Nearbound Blueprint. And it's exactly that. It's an easy digestible book written by Jared Fuller, um, our chief ecosystem officer, who essentially says, hey, you put in a solution like Reveal, that's great. It's not going to solve everything just then and there. How do you start getting the involvement, the buy-in from additional stakeholders and making sure there's work through uh, those workflows, um, the reports, everything that we can start tracking to make this a full fluid motion. Mm. So um, typically it's the what's next. And then, you know, people are also always curious, you know, what others have seen in terms of success rates. Um, and then everybody's favorite question is always what's pricing as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 while we won't be able to get into individual pricing, but what's the, what's the structure? How, how is it licensed? So we're a typical SaaS based model. So we don't believe in nickel and diming on every single thing. Um, maybe like some of our competitors at times, we really want to focus on, you know, who's getting their eyes on the data. So what I like to say is, uh, you know, seats, we um, have two packages, one, the pro one, the power. And the biggest difference is essentially, do you want to integrate this to your overall tech stack? Or are you just trying to do some of the more elementary introductory stuff to start out with and then go mm -hmm. to that? full-blown nearbound summit brilliant and then i guess just in wrapping up holden what's uh, what's the best way for people to get in touch with reveal or with yourself or find out more about that um uh that ebook or, or notebook that you mentioned yeah visit nearbound.com it's our um, new rebranded website um it's got all the information all of our blogs our case studies it's got great podcasts and just overall great material so we're not just trying to sell. We want to educate because this is a project, a uh, new category that's going to, you know, really move um, a lot of companies forward in the future. So mm -hmm. we want to help paint that education, get the framework going, and then be that tool, that asset to help along the way. That's brilliant. Well, thanks, Holden, so much for for joining us and for spreading the nearbound uh, word, uh, the message. And uh, I'm sure people will look forward to getting in touch with Reveal and with yourself and, uh, and, and building out their own partner program. So thank you for joining. Appreciate the time, Charlie. Thank you.